The Pacific Northwest is a magical place. Tucked in between our trees, mountains, and salmon streams are thousands of fiber enthusiasts who are passionate about wool and other natural animal fibers. These include the people who raise the animals, run the processing mills, own the retail shops, and design and create products. But there are many threats to this way of life. The disappearance of pasture land to accommodate population growth, the importation of inexpensive and low quality synthetic fibers, the ease of buying products online, the misperceptions about the qualities of wool. Um, there's a bit of a a misnomer with wool for people. A lot of people just automatically think they can't wear it against their skin. That was probably the case back in the 40 or 50 years ago when wool was pretty coarse. We didn't have the technology to refine it the way we do now. Um, but you know, you get wool, modern wool today is, you can wear it against your skin like, like any other material out there. You just can't beat wool. I mean, you can't beat that fiber. I mean, that's why it's been around for so long. It's wonderful. I mean, it's a wonderful fiber. It keeps you warm. It's um, water resistant. It's fire resistant. I mean, it's just kind of a magical fiber. And I can't imagine why you'd want to work with anything else. Wool has always been one of those things to me that's authentic. It's real. It has value and it it's a natural resource. It's, it's provided to us almost effortlessly, it seems, through the animals. And, um, and it has so much potential and, and value. The wool that, that we have now is not the wool, you know, of 30, 40 years ago. But there's so many fine wools that are, are as soft or can be softer than cashmere, um, and people aren't aware of that. Wool is a really useful fiber, and, uh, uh, and people are becoming more and more interested in using natural fibers uh, and supporting sustainable agriculture. And it, it seems like raising sheep and, uh, and using the fiber is part of that process. Um, it's environmentally friendly to produce it, um, to raise the animals, and, um, and, and it's, a very, it's a very interesting way to use your land. You don't need very much land to produce enough fiber for everybody in your family to have a sweater a year for the rest of their life. Just by eating grass, basically, they give us this wonderful fiber that keeps us warm. They make milk for their babies. They wonderful lambs they produce just by eating grass. I'm primarily a grass farmer, um, or maybe I'm a soil farmer because in order to grow the sheep, you have to grow good grass. In order to grow good grass, you have to pay attention to your soil. So it really goes back to the soil, and, and by growing good soil too, you sequester carbon. And so I feel like people should know that ultimately we're doing good sustainable things for the whole environment by just wearing wool. And so I consider that our product is a much higher quality product because we are producing it in a sustainable, non-chemical, much more organic fashion. For our Washington and Oregon yarns, I buy direct from family farms and ranches. Um, and I travel out and meet them and see their farms and it gives me a connection with the products that I'm using and the people behind them, which is very meaningful to me. This fleece in front of me is a Targi fleece raised in Everett on a farm that's been around for 30 years, 30 plus years. And when I went out to see them this past year, um, you know, the picture of their farm is a main street cut right through their farm. Having sheep and being a small farm, you're not only producing wool or meat, 
but you're also um, improving the landscape. You're keeping open, you know, open pastures and a place for birds and a place for fish and a place for other wildlife. So you're really creating a habitat. I mean, it could be a bunch of homes on there, but you have a farm. We've lost some yarn shops in in recent years, and and the people that I've spoken to, you know, blame it a lot on on the internet, you know, because to, because people have taken their lives indoors. You know, everything's you know just a click away. But what they don't realize is is they're not supporting supporting their local yarn store, and the yarn store is going to close, and they're going to lose a lot. They're not going to have local help. Who's going to help you when you run into a problem? And where where are you going to have community? I mean, this is community here. When when we're open for business, you know, sometimes there's not a place to sit here, and we're all here sharing and helping each other, and and you lose that. Um, the future of the wool industry in the U.S. is, I think, is really pretty iffy. You can divide it into two parts. There's the niche part, which is the part that we're associated with, mostly people that have that have small acreage and small uh, and low numbers of animals that produce a fiber that they actually want to utilize or they think they can sell. Um, the commercial side is, has been in decline for the last 50 or 60 years. I think the numbers of sheep in the U.S. now is around 5 million or 5.5 million, which is probably about 10% of what it was. What I see that's really, really sad is when you get down into some of the, the Autin Valley, the Kent Valley, and getting paved over, we will never, ever get that back. Never, it's gone. And that's 30, 40 feet of topsoil. In addition to the resource being lost and the manufacturing being lost, I think something that we have, have, have lost is our awareness and understanding of how to rely on each other. And I, I do believe the only way to go forward in a successful way is to relearn how farms, mills, and artisans rely on each other and, and depend on each other. But I think sharing, sharing what goes on on a small farm with people who are interested in fiber is, would probably be beneficial to all of us involved. I think education is key. Um, just talking about wool or talking about animals and farms, people are so far removed from that anymore that they, they've lost sight of, of how wonderful it all is. Community and collaboration are a big part of Tolt. Um, I love working with the different farmers, mills, designers, um, and our knitters here at the shop. I mean, it's a huge part of what we do and what we love about this industry. And I think it's very important. The challenges in selling anything, and, and particularly niche market stuff like wool and, and, and other animal fibers, is, is marketing. It's forever been the problem because, it's, because it is niche, it's small scale, and to target your, um, your potential customers is not an easy thing to do at all. How can we assure the future of this industry? education and cooperation are key. Fiber growers on the peninsula have a really cool opportunity to come together and, uh, and uh, pool their skills and their artistic creativity and their uh, wool and their uh, love of community and the, the, just the beautiful uh, region that they live in uh, to create a, a, a really great brand. Personally, I think po a positive outlook for the future depends on us learning how to rely on each other and make use of our natural resources without all of the work being burdened on one farm or one processor. Cooperatives are not easy businesses, but, um, but they are um, about uh, pooling your resources together and accomplishing again that which can't be done alone. The value of a local cooperative would be could be quite could be quite effective because it's just, it's bringing more and more people that are local into the circle. Um, the co-ops exist solely to serve their member owners and uh, co-ops are democratically governed. Typically this means one member one vote and oftentimes I think that's the hardest part for people to come together and I realize that they have to set aside their individual 
uh, agendas for the greater good of the of the group. Yeah, cooperatives, I think, are a good thing. You've got to you've got to get together as a group. You cannot do it on your own if you want to make something out of it. For the Pacific Northwest Fiber Web, anywhere from the growers to the artisans to the uh, retailers to the uh, the hobbyists and the uh, the career person who's been engaged in fiber for a long time. Uh, it's, it's just amazing to see uh, the skill sets that are brought together. It's not just, uh, it's not just a business for them. It's um, a way of life and it's uh, preserving their heritage and we're proud and glad to be a part of that. The Pacific Northwest Fiber Web is designed to support the local fiber community by creating high quality, regionally branded merchandise. Our vision is to unite everyone on the fiber chain, the farmers, the mill owners, the designers, the retail shops, and present and potential customers. By working together, we can accomplish more than we can as individuals.